Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Paula McCain. I'm one of the senior business advisors for North Central Texas Small Business Development Center. Don't know if you realized it. Today is National Gingerbread House Day. Now, I, I don't actually make gingerbread houses, but I have been known to steal a gumdrop or two. The SBDC is a leading provider of assistance for small businesses, and we are grant funded because and because we are grant funded, uh, we can bring our services and then opportunities like this webinar to you at no cost. Uh, to remind you, this session is being recorded and it will be posted to our YouTube channel. Uh, today's webinar is selecting, setting up and using QuickBooks online. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat room. We'll be checking that regularly throughout the presentation. I want to introduce you to Stacy Kildall. She is an internationally recognized expert in QuickBooks Online and owner of Kildall Services LLC. Stacy was the first QuickBooks Pro Advisor to complete the QBO certification exam, as well as into its payroll certification exam and is also certified as an advanced QuickBooks Pro Advisor for both desktop and online editions. She's certified Enterprise Solutions Pro Advisor and certified QuickBooks user. And oh my goodness, you can't get any more certifications. I, I don't have space. Uh, thank you for joining us, Stacy. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, I always get so excited when I get to do these events with you guys and see you guys. So thank you, uh, as always, for having me. I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share so um, we can start talking about QuickBooks. So there we go. There. So we're going to really be talking about um, how to select QuickBooks Online and um, for anybody who uh, has never seen, I've done a few of these webinars with um, with you guys, um, but what I tend to do is go through all the slides and then do all the demos. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do um, today. And what we're before we do that, I do wanna call out um, the amazing team at North Central Texas SBDC. Um, they are there to help with existing businesses, uh, new businesses, there are tons of resources that local SBDC offices have to offer. Um, they give you uh, a lot of practical assistance to help you um, survive, grow, and prosper your small business. So I can't recommend them enough. The phone number is here on the screen, or you can go to their website, make an appointment, and find out all the good stuff. They probably have resources and uh, stuff to help you that you didn't even know that you needed, I would bet. Um, so, as <laughs> Paul mentioned, my name is Stacy Kildall. I've been using QuickBooks since 1998, um, and I've been a trainer for Intuit since 2005. Um, being a trainer for Intuit, uh, what they like to do, Intuit likes to do is, I'm not an in, uh, employee, as I mentioned, or Paula mentioned, I own my own bookkeeping business. What Intuit does is they hire, they find um, pro advisors like myself, practitioners to create and teach content to other accounting professionals as well as some businesses. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So uh, what we're going to be covering is starting, uh, getting started in QuickBooks Online and just a basic overview of just navigating uh, throughout the product. And then we're going to touch a little bit on the sales center and the expense center. Um, to give you a, a, just a little bit of background, um, QuickBooks Online is a cloud-based uh, general ledger accounting program. Um, it's really designed to simplify workflows for your small business. Um, Intuit was born, I believe, in the mid-80s uh, by Scott Cook. You can see here in the screen, this is the actual kitchen table where uh, basically Intuit was born. So um, you guys may have heard of Quicken. Um, Intuit divested themselves of Quicken a few years ago, but Quicken was really built um, from Scott Cook watching his wife struggle to balance their checkbook. So he designed Quicken um, to help um, just individuals manage their finances. And what he found out after a few years is that small businesses were using it. And because Quicken isn't like a, a, um, a true accounting program, like a double-sided accounting program, um, what he did 
what with Intuit was create QuickBooks. And for years, there was just the desktop version. Um, but I believe in 2001, uh, they rolled out um, QuickBooks Online. And that's the majority. Most small businesses are choosing QuickBooks Online now. But there are other options. So um, we have QuickBooks uh, Online. This is their cloud-based accounting solution. They do have a desktop version. They have um, uh, Pro Premier. Um, one for Mac and one for enterprise, although uh, just last week or the week before Intuit announced that they are going to stop selling their desktop. That doesn't mean that you still can't get it. You can still purchase. It's all subscription based. And as long as you purchase it before July 31st, 2024, you can continue to use uh, QuickBooks desktop um, for indefinitely. I have found um, I have about 50 clients in my business uh, uh, in my practice that we work with. All but one are using QuickBooks Online um, just because of the ease of use and the ease of access, not just for um, my clients, but allowing the tax preparer to log in and get the information they need to help uh, with year end taxes and quarterly estimates, um, but also the access for me as their bookkeeper to log in and do what I need to do. There's also another product for small businesses. Um, it is um, called QuickBooks Self Employed. It's kind of, uh, for those of you who are old enough to have watched a lot of Brady Bunch like I have, I consider it to be like the Cousin Oliver to the QuickBooks uh, uh, Brady Bunch. Um, it's not that annoying though, because um, Cousin Oliver, but it's basically a cousin of QuickBooks Online. It's really designed for Schedule C clients. You can't customize the chart of accounts with it. The chart of accounts in QuickBooks Self-Employed is really mapped directly to the Schedule C form that your tax preparer is gonna use. So it's really geared for like sole props. I have found that the best um, candidate for QuickBooks Self-Employed would be someone who uh, has started a business kind of like as a side gig. And a perfect example is a number of years ago, we had our deck redone. Um, we expanded our deck to go across the whole back of our house after we put a door wall, which for anybody outside of Southeast Michigan is a sliding glass door. Uh, for whatever reason, all of us here call it a door wall. I don't know why. Um, we replaced that. Anyway, we had our deck redone and Jamie the deck guy was telling me that he doesn't, this is what he does. He has a full-time job and he just does decks on the on the weekends. He has the materials delivered on a Thursday afternoon. And then um, when he gets off work on Fridays, he works Friday, Saturday, and Sunday um, building decks. And uh, he was using one, his just his business account he, or his personal account for everything. And he's a perfect example of someone who could use um, QuickBooks self-employed. He's got one bank account. There's no business bank account. He's using his personal. He's a sole prop. And so this is a perfect way because you can connect your bank and you can say this is a personal um, expense or this is a business expense and then what kind of business expense. There's also QuickBooks payroll, um, QuickBooks online payroll. Uh, it pretty much does everything for you. It's kind of, you if you have everybody on salary, you can set up an automatic payroll. So if you're not tracking hours, it will automatically do the payroll for you. The other thing is if you do have hourly employees and I process payroll through QuickBooks online payroll for quite a few of my clients, um, we enter in the hours, we submit the paychecks. Um, they, most of them are direct deposit, a couple of them uh, handwrite checks, but then QuickBooks online will do all of the form filings and the payments on, on the behalf of the business as well. Um, there is also TurboTax. Unfortunately, Mint is going away. Um, this should be actually Credit Karma, so that's my bad for not updating this. So um, Mint and Credit Karma are like personal um, finance stuff. I like both of them. I used Mint for years and years and had all of our personal stuff. And what's really cool uh, with Mint and what it will now just be Credit Karma is that it will give you uh, your uh, personal like valuation, like what you're what you're worth personally. So it's kind of cool. And then of course there's TurboTax, and TurboTax is um, tax prep software for um, individuals and small businesses. I still do recommend um, finding a tax preparer, a professional tax preparer, either an enrolled agent or a CPA um, to do your taxes or help you do your taxes if you are um, a business. Uh, if you are a sole prop, that's a little bit easier with the Schedule C. Um, but once you get into um, an S Corp or any kind of partnership, I cannot recommend enough uh, finding a, a qualified uh, tax preparer. So the other thing that um, I want to mention is the whole QuickBooks Online ecosystem. So it's really 
think of it like there's QuickBooks Online and that does all of your bookkeeping. You can add QuickBooks Payroll to that. You can add QuickBooks Time, um, or if you, uh, depending on the, the type of subscription for payroll, QuickBooks Time is included in that. And QuickBooks Time allows you to um, do scheduling, um, track time. It offers a time clock, a punch system, um, but there's also QuickBooks Payments as well. And now with their addition, they acquired MailChimp a couple years ago. You can um, connect MailChimp directly to QuickBooks Online and do um, email marketing as well. So, um, and then there's also apps.com. And with apps.com, if there's something that is not in QuickBooks Online, say a perfect example would be manufacturing. If you are a small business who is doing assemblies, you're taking inventory components and putting them all together to build another inventory component, um, then uh, you're gonna need a third party software for that. And if you go to apps.com, you can find one um, or any kind of gap in the features in uh, QuickBooks Online, you can go to apps.com and you can find something. There's uh, some really great programs there um, that you can uh, find like for um, business planning and forecasting and all sorts of stuff. Um, if you have subscription based uh, things where you want to have like a self serve subscription where clients or customers can go online and sign up for stuff or stop their subscription, uh, you can go to apps.com and find that. It's pretty great. Chargeover is an amazing example of that. Um, so some of the features uh, that I truly love about QuickBooks Online that make it super easy for me to do not only do my own books, but work with my clients is bank feeds. Um, we, uh, I think we did a session or if not, we were doing a session about bank feed um, in QBO with rules. And so what that is, is you're going to take QBO and you're going to connect your bank or your credit card and you're going to pull those transactions in and QuickBooks Online is going to match them to something that's already in QuickBooks or you can add them. I use this exclusively for all of my, I use my American Express card for business and I try to pay all my expenses on that. And so I use the bank fees exclusively to enter all of my credit card transactions. There's also recurring transactions, another big favorite of mine. Recurring transactions are, I hear a cat, she's coming in to bring me a treat. So I have quite a few um, cats. So if you hear one, uh, it's her and she's um, staring at me. Um, so, uh, the recurring transactions, a perfect example of that is how I work with my clients. What I do is once I have the engagement letter signed, um, we, uh, also send out a payment authorization form. And so at the beginning of the month, I create a recurring sales receipt that automatically charges their bank account or their credit card account so that I don't have to remember to invoice them every month. So you can do recurring transactions for tons of stuff, your rent, uh, you know, your, uh, loan payments, whatever it is that you have, um, you know, you can do a lot with recurring transactions. And then also you can access it from your mobile device. So there's a mobile app. I'm going to give you some screenshots at the very end of the session that show you how to do that. Um, I was just at uh, a conference and um, one of our other, uh, my other fellow trainers and my friend Bryce, uh, we would go to eat at the conference and he would religiously open up his, um, he was very, disciplined in doing this, he would open up his mobile app, take a picture of the receipt at whatever restaurant and post that transaction to his uh, firm QBO uh, from the mobile device. So it's a pretty great tool. And it's, I, I want to go back to this. It's not necessarily a sync because it's, there's no syncing because when you're logging in from your mobile uh, uh, device, you're logging into your QBO account. So there's no having to like sync it to that. It is the QuickBooks Online account because it's all, it's just like if you were logged into your bank or any other website, um, that's what the mobile app does. Um, and then just, these are just some of the, the benefits of QuickBooks Online. I'm not gonna read through all of these, um, you know, and some of the apps that you can work with with QuickBooks Online. Some people may be like, why do I need an app? Um, sometimes it's adding the additional functionality. Um, I also think that for a lot of small businesses, um, the one in the purple circus, a circle is the separation of duties. Having a separate app that you can have people just log into that and do what they need to do, maybe an inventory manager, maybe a sales uh, person and you know an outside sales staff, um, anything like that keeps them out of QuickBooks Online is also an added benefit of using um, apps with, with QBO. 
So how do we get um, a QuickBooks online subscription? There is a link at the bottom of the slide if you download it, but you can always go directly to um, QuickBooks online. Um, I'm gonna do all the demo in a minute. So um, you can always go to um, quickbooks.com and I'll show you how to sign up for that in just a moment. Um, the screenshot, they, they like to, to uh, change, update their website. So the sign up may be in a different spot, which you guys will see when we get to the demo. Um, once you sign up, it's gonna ask you, um, hey, what's your email address? If you have no other Intuit account, um, you're gonna be asked to create a new user ID. Um, it will generally be your email address. Um, if you aren't sure when you sign up, it will tell you there is already an Intuit account with this name. And so it'll prompt you to sign in. And you may have an account if you've ever used TurboTax or Mint or Credit Karma or MailChimp, something, any Intuit owned um, property you uh, that you have an account with, you may already have an account. One of the things that you can do with it is if you're using like Gmail, you can have, you know, like Stacy plus, you can put a plus or a dot um, anywhere in your, you know, you could do like Stacy plus QBO at killed all services if you're using Gmail and you can create a new user if you don't want to use the same login for that. Um, but once you um, sign in, it's going to ask you, you know, you're going to like, you'll walk through and I'll show you, we're going to set up an account or I'm going to try to. Um, and then when you, once you have your account set up to log in any other time, you're gonna go to qbo.intuit.com and you're gonna use that same uh, login that you created or that you already had to log into uh, QBO. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick demo of that. So I've just gone to quickbooks.com and it has redirected me to quickbooks.intuit.com. And you can see there is, um, you know, you can sign in here. Um, you can go find your products and services. And so if we want, or it's right here at the top, it's saying, hey, here's uh, QuickBooks Online. I can say buy now and save. Um, and then it's gonna give you the different options. So there are four levels of QuickBooks Online, Simple Start, Essentials Plus and Advanced. Um, you can see each one gives you a little bit more functionality. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that Simple Start allows you to have one user. So the one user is going to be a primary user, and then you can add two accountant users. There's no way to add any other employees that work for you unless you upgrade to Essentials. Um, Essentials gives you three users plus the two accountant users, plus gives you five users plus two accountant users, and advanced is gonna give you um, up to 25 users and then three accountant users. And this, you can see it says customer favorite, the majority of clients that I have are using QuickBooks Online Plus. At this point, I have no one that's using Simple Start. Um, I have one or two that are using Essentials, and right now I don't have any that are using advanced. However, advanced has a ton of really great um, options. So if you, the, I have found that the majority of clients that are choosing advanced are doing it because they need them more than five users or because they need uh, some of the very specific um, features that might be in there. Um, you know, uh, they have, um, you know, there's, they need to sync with Excel. They may need to um, batch in, uh, enter invoices, or they need to really, the big thing here is this custom access. So if you um, have very specific user access, you might wanna take a look at QuickBooks Online um, uh, Advance. So you can do the free trial for 30 days, or um, you can choose to purchase. So, um, you know, you can, toggle that on and off and you can see what the prices are. Um, and then once you just choose the plan, it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna add payroll? There's three versions of payroll. There's core, premium, and elite. You guys can take a look at these. We're not gonna need any of these. Um, the I think the biggest thing to remember is that premium and elite both come with QuickBooks time included. Uh, so if you don't need that time, um, you can always sign up for these and then downgrade later. Same with QBO. So we're gonna say continue without payroll. 
Um, and then we would just add in our email address and we would just um, sign up if we need to. So I'm not turning on QuickBooks Live and you know we can say, hey, um, whoops, let's see, we've got QBOA. Oh, why is this being weird? Okay, there we go. I could do without payroll and we wanna do QBOA. And let's do today's date, 2023, and password, and I'm going to do the one more step. Oh, <laughs> it's because it's my demo, because I'm probably not using it, or I've used that before. So basically, once you sign up, we're going to just pretend that we've signed up. And then we're going to go and we're going to go ahead and we're going to sign in. So the problem with this doing this demo is I can't give you necessarily the first use scenario where it walks you through what type of business do you have? Do you have invoices? It's going to ask you and it's going to walk you through a bunch of different um, like a wizard, like a setup wizard. And it's gonna ask you a bunch of questions about your business and just walk through and answer those. And then you'll be in the product to start using it. So we're gonna go back to our slides for a couple moments um, and uh, just kind of talking about uh, navigating a little bit. So navigating around the QBO uh, company is pretty easy. Uh, when you first start, I, I just want to say, like, just click around. You don't have any data in there. Just click everything and see what it does. Um, the other thing is there is a QuickBooks Online test drive. So if you just go to the Googler and you type in QuickBooks Online test drive, um, you can find a sample and you can play around with it before you decide that you want to purchase it. Um, so there's different ways to get to everything, but when you log into QBO for the first time, you're going to be brought to this dashboard, and this is going to be something that we'll be able to customize, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Um, we have our left nav option, and so this is where we can choose to get to our sales center, our expenses. We can look at projects if we choose to use projects. Um, and then we have links to apps. If you're going to turn payroll on, you can have that as well. One of the cool things about this left nav, this left hand navigation, is that it's pretty customizable now, uh, which is I love. Um, and I'll show you how to do that when we get into the demo. The quick create or the plus new button, this is where you can go uh, to create transactions. This And you can access this button from any page that you are on in QBO. So it doesn't matter what you happen to be looking at if you realize, oh, I need to enter this expense or, oh, I need to enter this invoice. It doesn't matter where you are in the product. You can always get to this plus new button, this quick create, and go ahead and enter a transaction. Our gear icon over on the top left, this is where we're going to really do more of the setup. So the right side with the, the left nav and the, and the quick create, the plus new button, this is more entering transactions. Whereas the gear icon, this is where we're gonna go tell QuickBooks Online how we want it to work for us and do a lot of setup. Um, it's basically where we manage the company. You add users, you can change your um, settings, um, things like that. The On the dashboard, um, we have, uh, we, it doesn't really matter um, what type of user you are. This is going to be the starting page whenever you log into QBO, um, when you're just logging in. Um, it's packed with a bunch of information. It gives a snapshot of the business's financial health and any recent activity. You can see data and graphs that show your income, your sales, your profit and loss. Um, you can see balances in your checking account. So you can see that here. Um, and then what's really neat is you can kind of customize this a bit um, as well. So there's a, a way for you to um, add or um, remove some of these like cards from the dashboard and then rearrange them if you need to. So the cool thing about the dashboard, um, and I think I talked about this in another one of our webinars, is that when you click into any of the data that's on these different cards, basically on the dashboard, it's gonna take you to um, different centers, a sales center, an expense center, 
um, within QuickBooks Online so you can get some detail into where those numbers are show or coming from that are on the dashboard. And again, I'll show all of this to you in just a second. Um, Again, looking at the dashboard, there is cash flow, and you can change the date range on each one of the cards by just clicking on the arrow um, that you see here where it's showing six months. Um, and then you can change the period of time that you want to look at that. Um, and then this just shows uh, when we're looking at sales, it gives you an opportunity. The one thing that to keep in mind is it doesn't allow you to do custom. So you have to just go by whatever the default is. Um, which is not that big of a deal because most people are looking at like last 30 days, last 90 days, whatever. Um, and then if you click into one of those, say the sales center, it's going to take you into um, this area where you're going to have a bunch of tabs across the top. This is where uh, users can manage existing sales transactions, add new ones. Uh, you can also go to that plus new button and add those transactions, but you can also do it from uh, a bunch of these tabs in here. So when you select sales from the left nav, it also takes you here. So there's a bunch of different ways for you to get to different places in QBO. That's why I tell everybody when you're new to it, just click. Just click around. I have never taken a QuickBooks class ever in my life when I first started using QuickBooks. I just went through, I opened a sample company in a desktop file and I clicked every option. I dropped down every menu and clicked every single one to see what the product did. Um, and if you're using one of those test drives like I told you about, um, you can't mess it up because it's a test drive. It's like Cinderella's um, carriage. Uh, when you log out, it goes back to whatever, any changes that you made in that test drive, they go back just like Cinderella's carriage turns into a pumpkin at the end of the night. Uh, that's how the test drive works. When you log out, any changes are gone. So you can't mess it up. A test drive is an amazing tool. Um, if we're looking at all sales, and I'll go through all of this, you can see um, the money bar, it's a visual representation of any open and recent sales activities. It's going to show unbilled, unpaid, recently paid activity. There's going to be an action column at the right that you can um, kind of do the next step. It's going to recommend the next step in the workflow process. Um, invoices tab shows you exactly that, a list of all of the invoices that you um, have created. Customers tab, this is where you're going to go to get your customer list um, and you can uh, search for a company or a customer um, and then you can that will take you to their customer detail page. There's also a tab for products and services or what you may hear me refer to as items. This is just the stuff that your business sells. It's any products or services that you sell to your customers or your clients. We also have what we call, us trainers call the baby gear, but Intuit calls the grid gear. And so when you're looking at any of these, um, these kind of centers, the all sales or invoices or customers, you're going to get down at the um, kind of in the middle of the screen underneath the money bar, you're going to get this little grid gear icon. And this uh, on the right hand side, this is going to tell you like what it's going to let you customize what you see when you go to that specific center. And then that action column, like I mentioned, so what you can see here highlighted in the screenshot on the left side of the screen is it's looking at an invoice and by default, the next step in the workflow is receive payment, but you can also drop that arrow down and choose other actions to do uh, to, to, to do to or with that transaction. The expense center, um, this is, uh, it's a kind of a one stop shop, right, for um, making any um, transactions that are purchases or expenses in your business. Um, you can filter it, you can sort it by status, by date range, by payee, um, and by category. Um, and just like uh, the sales center, it has an action column, it has a grid gear icon. What I like about this, and you can see this is highlighted, that category, that is also your expense accounts. And you can see that this check to Bayshore Cal Oil Service has been posted to automobile, you know, the fuel expense account. I can go change that. Maybe this, for whatever reason, was not fuel. For $10.60, it looks like it maybe might have been a snack, right? So maybe we change it from fuel to a snack because I'm not 15 and I know my client isn't, or 16, and I know they can afford to put more than $10 worth of gas in their car, or I hope they can. 
not 15, 16. You got to be 16 to drive. Not that I was driving anything when I was 15, just my snowmobile. I'm not going to cop to that at all. Okay, so then we look at our vendor center. Uh, this is very similar to the customer list. This is just our list of vendors. These are the list of uh, businesses or people that we have paid money to. Um, and one of the things when you're setting up QuickBooks Online, and I'm going to go through and show you um, how to import a customer list and a vendor list when you're setting up QBO is if you maybe have a vendor list um, uh, or a contact list, don't, unless you have all of that stuff in like an Excel spreadsheet or a CV, you know, a, a CSV file, some sort of spreadsheet, don't worry about getting all of the customers and the vendor names in all at one time. You can add them as you use them. I know there's a lot of clients who, um, you know, when they, when we're setting up, they're like, oh, I don't have like one list of customers and I just tell them don't sweat it. Like, don't worry about it. Right not saving lives. This is just QuickBooks. Enter them in as you need to enter transactions that are related to them and don't worry about it. However, if you do have um, some sort of contact list for customers or vendors, I will show you how to import that. This is a vendor detail page. This is just really showing um, all of the details about that vendor. It's going to list the name, the address. Um, you, it'll, there'll be a, a transaction list as well as vendor details. Um, and I'm going to go through and demo all of that stuff that we just talked about. So I'm logged into QuickBooks Online. You can see it's taken me to the dashboard. The dashboard looks a little bit different than the screenshot that we had before. And the reason why is because I have customized this. So one of the things if you're working in public or maybe you're in the office and you don't want people to see things, I want to point out is this little privacy tab here. So if you toggle that, it's not going to show any numbers. It just turns all the numbers off. Um, and so you can toggle that back on. We can also now customize this layout. So if I want, I can um, add or remove some widgets. So maybe I want to show my cash flow and maybe my invoices, and then I'm just going to click on save. So now I can rearrange this if I need to. Maybe I really want my cash flow to be up here at the top and I want my invoices to be right here. So you can drag and drop and move this um, dashboard around. Uh, this is a relatively uh, new uh, feature. The other thing that you can do is you can say, hey, I want to reset the layout and it's just going to reset it to the default. So this is what it shows um, when you first uh, sign up or you first start using it. I'm not a big fan of having Intuit um, promote a bunch of this stuff. So this discover more, this is, I usually get rid of this um, because I don't need it for what I'm doing. My clients may want to keep that. And this is not a global um, customization. This is user specific. So once we're done and we have it looking the way we want, we can just go ahead and click done. I mentioned that gear icon. When you first sign up for QuickBooks Online, you're really going to want to go through the gear icon and then click account and settings. And what you're going to want to do is go through each one of these. You're going to put in the company. A lot of this will be done. Um, a lot of this will be completed when you do that uh, first use, that wizard, like what is your business name? What type of business are you? Um, but you don't have to worry about any of that. You can always come back here and change it if you have maybe um, put in the wrong um, address. So maybe you have a company address that is different. Your legal address uh, is different from your customer facing address. Maybe you have a PO box that you want clients or customers to see. You can go in and change that, which may be different from your legal address. So you can technically put in three different addresses here if you want to. Um, you want to, uh, you can edit your tax form here. So if you're a sole prop, um, and then you can choose your industry. Um, you go through your billing and subscription. Um, this uh, has moved and this is um, now in the, um, it's, it's in the, uh, it, if you click here uh, in the top right, uh, this is where you're going to manage all of that. So um, this is going to be all of your um, subscriptions. So you can see um, this is a canceled account. It's good until next year, but we can also um, add uh, QuickBooks Online Payroll, QuickBooks Time. We can sign up for um, payments. These are all Intuit products. Going back to our account and settings, um, our usage. 
This is just showing how many users, because this is a QuickBooks Online Plus account. We have five users, but we're only using one. Um, QuickBooks Online Plus allows us to use 250 accounts. So you can see where you are in the limits. If you notice that you're starting to get up towards the top of any of these, then it may be time to upgrade to the next subscription level. These are just your sales settings that you have. And so you can um, set up different uh, settings for your sales form content. Um, if you're using um, payment instructions, uh, if you're going to choose to charge late fees. So you can see there's a lot of different options. I highly recommend working with a pro advisor to help you with this if you're not sure, um, because we this is what we do all day long as we go through. Um, and we help clients figure out, okay, what, how do you work? Like, what is your process? I usually will start with a client and say, okay, from the time a prospective customer or client gets a hold of you until the sale or the transaction is done, walk me through that process. The same with any purchase. And so then once I know what their processes are and where any pain points are, I'm able to go in and help them set this up um, much more efficiently and make QuickBooks Online work for them. We have um, expenses where we can say, hey, do we, are we purchasing things? Um, you know, I wish I had three hours to go through all of this, but just know um, this is where you would sign up for payments. Um, if you're using QuickBooks time or your tracking time, you can set your first day of the week. Um, and then the advanced tab is just, if you're going to be using accounts, uh, account numbers, I should say, if you're going to be using tips, um, if you're using class location tracking, any automation, if you're using multi-currency, um, one thing about multi-currency is once you turn it on, you can't turn it off. So make sure that um, you really are using multiple currencies in your business before you turn this on. Um, and then there is a new feature that Intuit rolled out, which is the business network that allows other businesses to add you more easily as a customer or a vendor. And then just some other preferences. These are formatting preferences. And just make sure that once you click into these, and you make any changes that you do click save and then once you're done you hit done so you're going to want to do all of that um, and then what you can do over here with the left nav is you can edit this left um, navigation bar uh, you can see here i have some things that uh, i use all the time so you can set up some bookmarks if you need to um, and i can go in and edit this i can click on that little pencil icon and i can say you know what i want to see bills and um, maybe i want to see um, that business overview I can also drag and drop and reorder these. So you can see here, I've only got five in my bookmarks. I've added two more. Once I click save, those now will show up. So I have a really quick way to get back to um, my dashboard or my business overview and take a look at some of that stuff in my bank transactions. So I would leave the nav bar, the left nav bar, the default, which shows everything until you kind of get comfortable and you get familiar um, with the product, because then you're going to know what you're using and uh, what you use all the time or most commonly use. And then you can customize these bookmarks. The other thing um, you can, if I wanted, I could just have no bookmarks and just get rid of all of these bookmarks and then with the menu i can just have everything turned on so this is how this would show up when i first started using quickbooks it would have all of this stuff here right and i can just hit reset reset to default and then click save and so when i first log into quickbooks online this is what my left nav is going to look like and i can then go in and customize but i would say use it for a couple weeks even a couple months and then go in and customize this left nav bar to what you need so i know with my clients what i'm doing and i have it customized for each one of my clients because i do different things for different clients so i just kind of wanted to um, mention that so if we go over to our dashboard and our business overview the other thing i want to mention is um, you may have cash flow 
Um, and so this is just the cash flow center. The not much here because it's a demo account, but it's going to show, um, you, you know, you have to link a bank account. We don't have a bank account. This is what it would look like if we had some bank accounts. This is a demo account, so there's not a lot, a lot there. Um, and then we have this planner. Um, and you can, uh, this is the first use. Uh, there's a little video so you can see uh, what it would do. And you can say, hey, I want to start planning. What this planner does is it pulls in the next three months. It looks at the history and then it will give you like a cash flow planner for the next three months. Um, and it syncs with any linked bank accounts. So that's uh, really important. And it tries to predict a uh, future item based on historical patterns, financial pattern patterns. So that's um, basically kind of general navigation. Uh, one of the things that I really do recommend is uh, going to your, oh, and I do want to show you if I go into my sales um, in the dashboard, we can adjust um, the date and we can say we want to look at the rolling, the last uh, rolling 12 months if we need to. And if I click here, it's going to take me to a report center. If I click the back button, it takes me back to the page that I was at last. Um, if I were to, uh, you know, go to my, my profit loss and click on my income, it's going to take me to a report if I need to, clicking that back button. Um, there's just a lot of stuff. If I go over here to invoices, um, oh, it's going to probably don't have any invoices. It would have taken me um, to my sales center. If I go over to my sales center, I apparently don't have any invoice. I don't have any invoices um, that are uh, in this particular account. I've never, I have not created any invoices. Um, they're probably all sales receipts, but that's where it would take me. Um, so you have our sales center here. There's different tabs. We have the overview, which gives you just kind of uh, like, you know, just a 30,000 foot um, overview. I can say, I don't want this right now. I don't want this either. Um, and then it's got kind of these quick actions that you can do in the overview where maybe I want to um, add a product or service. Uh, this is where we would add any items that we are trying to sell. Um, if we look at this one, so I'm going to look at this one. This is an item that we've set up. It's a non inventory um, product, which means we don't track how much quantity we have on hand. The thing about setting up items in QuickBooks Online is unless you have to, you are keeping track of how many you have on hand, you do not need to turn on inventory and you don't need to create inventory items. So if it's something that you maybe drop ship or that you purchase um, as needed, um, you would create a non inventory uh, product. So for this one, this is a saddle blanket. And we're telling QuickBooks Online, yes, I sell this to my customers and we sell it for $95. And then the income account, when we use this on a sales receipt or an invoice, we want that income to be posted to this particular revenue or income account. We can edit whether or not it is taxable. Um, and QuickBooks Online will track all of the sales tax that is owed, um, and it will also mark th this product as uh, taxable, and so it'll include the sales tax on the invoice. And then the other thing that's really cool about this is we can say, I also purchased this. So this is something that I purchased as well, which allows us to use the same item on expense transactions, check transactions, vendor bill transactions so that we can say, yes, I did purchase this so we can see profitability for each product or service that we are selling and buying um, to, you know, selling to our customers and buying from vendors. So we've got a pretty good markup here. We sell it for 95, but the default cost, we pay $40 for it. And in this particular screen right here, I'm saying when I use this on an item and I'm going to I'm going to create an expense in an invoice or a sales receipt so you can see the profitability on this. Um, I want it to post to this purchase account. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to do my plus new and I am going to create a sales receipt. So I'm doing plus new. I'm choosing sales receipt. 
a sales receipt, I'm recording what I'm selling as well as how I'm being paid for it. Whereas an invoice, I would just say, hey, I'm selling you this dear customer, you pay me at a later date. With a sales receipt, I am not doing that. Um, we are going to go ahead and sell it to um, Lily, and we're going to use that saddle blanket. You can see that the there's two items that I have that technically have saddle in the name. I just started typing saddle. I want a burrow saddle blanket. I'm going to sell two of these. Um, QuickBooks Online knows that I charge tax for it, um, and it's based on location. Um, right, so it's gonna, if you need to see the sales, the math on that, you can click on that and it's saying, hey, this is um, based on where you sold your items, you need to collect sales tax. And so um, Michigan, I'm in Michigan, and this is a Michigan customer. Uh, we have 6% uh, sales tax across the board. There's no county, city, blah, blah, blah. It's just easy. Um, so it's 6%. So I'm going to say they are going to pay me, um, if I could type it, they're going to pay me cash for this. And then I want to make sure that I post this to undeposited funds because I haven't taken it to the bank yet. I've just gotten the money. So I'm using the saddle bl uh, blanket and I'm going to save and close. But now I need to purchase this the saddle blanket because this is a very specific um, customer. So now I need to go in here and I'm going to say, hey, I... Um, I'm paying for this. I got to order it and we'll just order it from Amazon. <laughs> we'll just use Amazon. Um, and I don't want to use category because that's posting directly to an expense account. I want to use an item and I'm using, I'm going to type in saddle again, maybe if I can type, right? And we've got my saddle blanket and I am buying two of these and I can even tell QuickBooks it's specifically for this customer. And so I can go ahead and I'm going to say I'm paying uh, out of this credit card account, right? So I'm saying, yep, I'm using this credit card and I purchased this. I called, I ordered, and um, I'm entering this in right now and save and close. We're not going to worry about class tracking. So what does that mean? For that, if I go look at the saddle blanket, I can go back to my item list and I can run the report, right? And I just want to look at, um, we want to change uh, the date. So we want to um, change this to today. And so I can see with this, uh, all of the transactions that are associated with this particular report. So today, I sold two, I bought two, right? Um, I can also go back to my report center and if I say profitability, is it gonna, I can look at a product slash item profitability and I can look at it by customer. So I want to choose today doesn't have any info. What? Let's filter it. Count type. Let's, hmm. We want to filter this by product or service and we want to do equals and we want to do saddle blanket and then saddle blanket. Okay. Okay. So it's making a liar of me. <laughs> it would normally show uh that it was uh an item profitability but it's for whatever reason not going to show me that uh normally you would be able to look at a profit a product profitability like i said this is one of our demo accounts uh one of the things that we could do is we can also look at a profit and loss by customer and i can just search and i can say i want this to be today and run that report. And so now you can see the profitability. Um, this is just showing the accounts, right? So because I used an item that points to this revenue account, and when I purchased it, it points to this expense account, you can see that I made 190, I grossed 190, I spent 80. So my net income specifically for this customer for today is $110. So that's, I know it's super quick, um, but it's a high level overview. 
um, just of choosing your version of QuickBooks Online is just some basic navigation. Um, the last couple things I wanna talk about is just the mobile app. So when, um, when uh, we're using QuickBooks Online, we can access it like I am right now uh, directly from a browser. I can do this uh, with my iPad or my phone. I can use a browser on my phone or, or my mobile device, or I can download the mobile app. So you don't have to pay for the mobile app. As long as you have a QBO subscription, you can log into your QBO account. Um, it's available for um, iOS as well as Android. There's no syncing, as I mentioned, you are logging in. It would be the same as if I logged in directly from my browser like I just was. Um, and the level of security is the same as the browser version. So this is what the, um, these are just some screenshots of the app. One of the things that the mobile app does do um, is it will allow you to do mileage. Um, the only limitation with mileage, you can see here there's a little trip um, option. The only uh, limitation is that it will only track mileage for admin users. So um, you have to be an admin user to track the mileage. So for people who have a track a lot of mileage, I usually recommend just using a mileage um, app, a mileage tracker app, um, and then manually doing whatever you need to do uh, with that um, at the end of the year. A lot of stuff, um, and we've got a couple minutes. So if there's any questions, um, I can take some questions if you guys want. Uh, Christy is asking uh, if you're selling a product or service to a client, but you're marking it up, uh, or you're marking up the item you create, two columns or categories showing the actual cost to you and the profit or markup you sold it for? So desktop has something that has markup. The markups in QuickBooks Online, so there's a couple different ways that you can do it. The way that I showed it is just by saying, here's the item, and this is a plus version. And you can do this, um, and I think plus and essentials, um, where you can say, this is how much I sell it for, this is how much I purchase it for, and you can adjust those. Even if you put in a default amount, so that was 95 to sell and 40 to, to purchase, um, you can change those amounts. Maybe I didn't like that customer and I wanted to charge them $110. Or maybe I got a really good deal on it and I only paid $30 for the saddle blanket. So you can adjust the default prices on each one of the um, transactions that you use those items on. In QuickBooks, um, you can also set up a, a markup as well. So if I, um, I can go in here to account and settings, and I think it's here in expenses, um, you can set it up. So if you have a, a purchase, um, or a service, anything that you are purchasing, whether it's a, a, a it's goods or services, you can mark that as billable with plus and advance. And you can go up here and you can say, I want to do, the, if I'm gonna mark something as billable, I wanna set up a markup, a default markup percentage. And again, you can only do this in um, plus or advance. And this is, this is going to be something that maybe you don't normally sell, or maybe this is um, something that you are purchasing on behalf of the client um, and that you need to get reimbursed for. You're going to use the markup tool for that versus um, just setting up the item with a default sales price and a default purchase price. I, I hope that's what, I hope that answers the question. She says, thank you. Okay, yay. I, I very rarely use the markup. And the reason why is because when you go in and you enter an expense and we can say any of these expenses here, we'll just find this one. I don't even know what this is. This is office supplies. If I go in and I mark this as billable and you, again, this is only in plus or advance. And I say the state of Michigan, I don't know why the state of Michigan is a customer. Um, but we're going to mark this $99.99 and I save and close. You could see I didn't have any markup percentage. I didn't have markup set. But if I go in here and I create an invoice for the state of Michigan 
QuickBooks is going to tell me, hey, you have this expense. This little drawer is going to open up and it's going to say, hey, you have this expense. I can say, go ahead and add that. If I had set up a default markup percentage, that would show here, but I can always go in here and just uh, update this and charge whatever I want. So I have some clients who, in like I've set them up to use a default markup percentage, but for the majority of my clients, um, they're either going to do a custom markup or um, they're just going to get reimbursed for the actual cost of it. Okay, so you would do that if, if maybe you have a goal of uh, increasing your revenue by 10% or something. Yes, mark, yep, you just exactly. Apply it. Okay. Yeah. So, and so you can see, um, see, and that's not even going to show the, exp I don't even know why the expense isn't even showing up. Where did that expense go? Oh, because it wasn't that $99, let's change that, it's 2020, let's change it to today. <laughs> That's why. So if I go save and close, it changed that date, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I look at um, this, you can see the profit and loss by customer. We charge 99, but I just changed it when I added it to the, I marked it as billable. If I had set a specific um, default markup percentage, it would have, when I added it to the invoice, it would have just added that percentage and shown it. And I wouldn't have had to manually make it 120. Gotcha. Gotcha. Any other questions? Right. Just a comment. Okay. okay. About uh, QuickBooks, it sounds like they're doing a lot of updating as well, because I noticed when you said uh, you can set things up and move them around now, so your layout can be more comfortable for what you, your workflow is. Mm -hmm. I, I'm glad to see them going that direction since, you know, it being stuck in, you no, know, this is how it is and going to this window, this window, etc. <laughs> yeah. Setting it up for your, your spaceship because it's what exactly. it is exactly and so for what i really like is um as a pro advisor when i'm working with my clients i can um work with the client and say are there people that work for you um what do they need to do in quickbooks and i can schedule i use a google meet so i can schedule a google meet appointment with that particular employee and go through and have them log in and show them how to set these bookmarks so that it's just showing what they need to do for their job um, to make it a lot easier for them just to be more efficient and work a lot better. And like I said, I customize this left nav for every specific client. As soon as this rolled out, I was like, oh, sweet. So every time I would log into a client, I would go in and tweak it and, and get it set to do, to show just the stuff that I need to do for that client. So it's huge. I agree. Big deal. Um, I've used um, desktop and online, mm -hmm. and there's there's some pretty big differences between the two. But when I was working with an accountant who, on a monthly basis, had to see, you know, what did I put in. She would have to come to my office or I would have to take my laptop, plug in a, a flash drive, download everything. But with QBO, she could see the same thing that I'm, I was seeing. Yeah. So and I a really, convenience factor. I really love that. And I mean, there are ways that you can share desktop. Like I have one client who is on desktop and there's a bunch of different ways that you can do screen share and you can do remote login. Um, but it's always fraught that one client that I have that's on desktop, um, you know, sometimes team viewer works for us. Sometimes Google remote works for us and we have to, we have three different options because for whatever reason, sometimes 1 of those options isn't going to work. Like the last time. We use TeamViewer and the time before that we couldn't get TeamViewer to work. So we use Google remote desktop. So it just makes it so much easier mm -hmm. um, just to like get access and to get help using QuickBooks online. And I love desktop. Like I have always equated like describe desktop as like 
you know, like your first boyfriend or girlfriend, you always kind of have a little special place in your heart for them. You know, you always hopefully think fondly of them. That's how I think of desktop. Like I still love desktop, but QBO is just younger and hotter and it just is easier to use. <laughs> it just makes life so much easier to, to work with um, clients. Yeah. And you eventually get used to it. Just working in it with the practice, you just like anything else. Yeah, and the yeah, biggest the difference skills. is just the interface, really. Mm -hmm. um, it's still a check is a check is a check. Creating an mm -hmm. invoice is still the same. It's still using items. With QuickBooks Online Advanced, you, you now have the fixed asset manager that we used to have in desktop. The only thing that I wish QBO had that desktop has is um, it's called a loan manager and you can do what if scenarios like here's my loan, here are the terms of my loan, what if I pay an extra $4 or it allows you to compare two different loan options and it's honestly the only thing that I miss in QBO but at this point in the year of our Lord 2023, I can find that same tool online and use it just on a, you know, some kind of loan calculator. Mm -hmm. So not that big of a deal. And I didn't realize that uh, you could actually use MailChimp with QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. Is that is that new as well, or has it always been there and I was just oblivious? No, they just, um, Intuit just acquired MailChimp, I want to say maybe two or three years ago. Um, so it's a relatively new uh, thing with that acquisition. So it's really designed to help you take all of your, your QuickBooks uh, online contacts, like all of your customers and connect it directly to um, um, mail marketing. So you can say, hey, I'm having this special or I'm, you know, whatever you want to do. And it just makes it easier. So you don't have to export it to, you know, from QuickBooks and then import it and go through all that rigmarole. It's just automatically connected. It's pretty great. Cool. And is Credit Karma a new uh, acquisition? So Credit Karma is also relatively new. They purchased that a little bit lo uh, longer. I want to, I don't know what year, but they've had that longer than they've had um, MailChimp, but they just announced uh, earlier this year, I mean, we're at the end of 2023, they announced earlier this year that they're going to be getting rid of Mint and it's just going to, they're kind of, because Credit Karma and Mint are very, very similar. Mm -hmm. um, so they're just kind of doing away with Mint and uh, just having Credit Karma, which will still bring in, uh, you know, you can still kind of do the same things that Mint did. So gotcha. just consolidating. Gotcha. Well, I don't see any other questions right now. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Thanks you guys for having me again. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. We always appreciate having you and I always learn something new every every time I I watch one of your presentations. Well, that makes me so, happy. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Just want to remind everyone that there will be a survey coming out and we would appreciate it if you would complete the survey and send it back to us. It helps us uh, know how we're doing, how we can improve our program, uh, as well as what everybody would like to see in presentations and webinars coming up. Um, well, we're closing out the year on Thursday with Stacy customizing forms in QBO. Uh, come back at 10 a.m. Uh, Central uh, on Thursday the 14th, and we'll learn about customizing forms, uh, which ought to be fun. That sounds like it, it could be a lot of fun. I spend way too much time doing this. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> I want to remind everyone also that you can access the SBDC website using that QR code at the top of, of the screen there, and you can... Uh, go there and you can register for any upcoming webinars. You can get our contact information, schedule an appointment with an advisor, or find additional resources for small business owners. We are grant funded, as I mentioned earlier, so I'd like to give a shout out to those who actually do support us, uh, the Small Business Administration, 
the state of Texas, North Texas SBD regional office in Dallas, and our host institution, North Central Texas College. Thank you all for joining us today and look forward to seeing you on December 14th to close out 2023. Thanks, Thanks so guys. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.